Well, I am back from Colorado. I went to Denver to see my kiddos. It was so much fun. You're going to see some of that in the coming days. Uh, but on today's show on The Garden Life, well, we're just going to kind of hit or miss some things, kind of a a plethora of different topics, starting with something that you need to be doing right now, and that is this time of year, if you notice that a lot of your garden gloves have a blowout, <laughs> then you might want to order more. I just love these cool jobs, garden gloves. I think I've told you that before. I just placed another big order because I'm already thinking about stocking stuffers, and I've gotten a, a number of those. I also want to bring this up because it reminds me people, we need to do a Linda Vodder Live. So I think we're gonna probably try to schedule that around the first part of September because through August, I have so many projects coming up. Lord willing, this coming week on Monday, I am going to get my laundry room installed. So I'll make sure to share that with you. Um, I might even get my garage cleaned out and more importantly, things I will give you an update on shortly. The backyard is really moving around uh, very, moving along very expeditiously. So I'm happy about that. Um, so Stuart, we've got a lot to discuss. I'm gonna pot up some topiaries. It is the beginning of topiary month that I have self-declared August as topiary month. Boy, we just got all sorts of stuff to talk about. So what do you say? Let's do it. Javier, are you ready for your close-up? Yeah. So I told Javier and, and Sergio that I need to put on Amazon where they get their hats or from wherever they get their hats, something similar, because Javier has his very distinctive kind of out of Africa look, and then Sergio has more his, what do you call that? Kind of a, just a flat straw hat look, more maybe Santa Fe-ish or something. So we need to have the hat collection. <laughs> Javier's just going, oh my gosh. Okay, so the master is at work. And we saw earlier where Sergio was taking some of the pavers that I had as, as um, just kind of, well, pavers for inside in the interior of the upper, ter upper terrace for me to walk on as I'm working. And we're stealing some of those to put them back here as a platform for a couple of plant terraces that will be right here. Now you'll notice that he is recessing them very exactly, like he always does. He'll pound them into place. These are pavers that you get at, uh, these are 12 by 12s. I got these at Lowe's, I think, and they were about 238 a piece, something like that. So you could do this project pretty inexpensively. But you'll see how he's recessing them. So that'll prevent a tripping hazard. But the other thing is we have excavated out about three inches of dirt from around the patio and from this bed area. And then we're gonna come back in with my blend of gravel and that fine pine happy grow uh, landscape mix that I like and it will this will for the most part be hidden underneath that mulch but it will provide a nice stable ever-present platform for these plant terraces or for container plantings or whatever I want to put in here now why am I doing that well number one for obvious reasons I want them to be stable uh, number two, because I want to keep Javier busy. And <laughs> number three, because this area is so congested. The dirt is so hard packed underneath the canopy of these cedars that it would be very difficult to get much of anything established here. Maybe around the outer edges I can, but right in here, there's gonna be way too much root competition and I don't want to disturb the roots that are there of these very old trees. So uh, first, do no harm. So that's what we're doing here and I think I have mentioned many times that I just love the concept of a theater. You guys have seen some of them before at my other house. Klaus Dalby is the master of that and I like having theaters for my, my 
geraniums or pelargoniums um, for my angel wing begonias and increasingly for different kinds of vegetables. So I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with these plant theaters. There's one here, obviously. And then there is a larger theater here. And by the way, I've got some, some versions of these smaller corner pieces, plant stands, that are on QVC. I'll be showing those to you and putting a link to them. This one came from Gardener Supply. I don't even know if it's available. Um, we will look and see. But this has been, um, I've had this forever. And you can see here that I can take off these corner pieces and I could make, I could put the two corner pieces together and make a half round or even a full round by putting four of them together. And these are the ones that resemble what I have for sale on QVC. And I personally have ordered more of those for my own use. And those will be coming in shortly and I'll make sure to show them to you and, prov and provide a link. In fact, you could just go to Linda Vodder Home on QVC right now and you could probably find them. So this will be another theater here and we will do the same underneath that. So you can see over here that Javier has already put it in place. Thank you, Javier. Perfect timing. Uh, perfect timing. He's already put it in place. And then these will pretty much just go away because they'll be covered up by mulch, but also because there will be plants that just kind of cascade and flow over the side. And they're all together there then to kind of keep each other company. It makes it easier watering when they're not spread all around. But most importantly to me, it's all about how things look and there'll be much more dramatic impact when the whole family is together in one family portrait. Well, the last time we met at my kitchen cutting board, I was taking cuttings from my coleus, some of which I gifted to Stuart. Stuart, have you potted yours up yet? I have some of it. Okay, so I still have lots of these, and I promised you that I would transform some of them into topiary, and since it is now topiary month, let's do just that. I've got my gloves on. Okay. So let's get started. So number one, I typically, if I am going to have topiary all of one kind, I like to have all of one pot because I think then when you display them, and for me topiary is as much about the display as it is about the plant itself, I like to have them quite frequently grouped together. So three of these would look marvelous, I think, and, and I just like the cohesion and the rhythm and the repetition of the same kind of this Italian clay pot. Now you may recognize these, these previously held some orchids from Trader Joe's and I just always save them because they are perfect for these kinds of projects. Okay, so let's get started. It really, if we're going to do this step by step, I would say number one, take your cuttings. Just put them in a clear vessel, put them in the window, and they will begin to put out many, many roots. These really almost should have been potted up earlier. Number two, select your vessel of choice that you're going to be putting your topiaries in. Number three, just get a good, well-draining potting soil. Now, see, I should have put something there. I missed a step there, Stuart. I should have put something in the bottom. I kind of thought I already had, but I didn't. Wow. I should have put something in the bottom because didn't you see all that dirt that fell out oh, of the yeah. hole, the drainage hole Makes on the sense. bottom? See, I should have put something in there. I could have put a coffee filter in there. I could have put a shard, a something pottery shot, away, just any, anything that will prevent soil from coming out but will not prevent excess moisture from draining through. Come about right there, okay? You rotate it kind of. Yeah. There you go. Then simultaneously in this, this kind of big hole, I'm also going to put in my support like that. Getting it as straight as possible before I then gently tamp down the soil. And then this one, I'm gonna put in a little bit more soil. Okay. 
then I will take off my gloves and I have some just, and you can use whatever you like. I have just some common raffia here. What is raffia? Raffia is this stuff. You can get it at craft stores, you, you can get it anywhere. Um, and I'm just taking some strips of raffia and then at a couple of points, and I really kind of want it to go away, so I keep it pretty thin. And I am just going, and somebody will tell me I should do a figure eight there. So Isn't it I. Funny how we hear comments I know. I hear. I hear you guys. <laughs> I, I hear you guys. I hear you guys. Okay. So I'm just. I'm not going to pull it real taut. I'm just going to secure it gently to the support. And what I not. What I like about raffia is it will. It will get dirty and age over time, and then you really won't be able to see it. I'm going to take another piece and I think I'm going to secure this to the top and just gently torque it so that you are not strangling any of the leaves. Okay, so I'm just gently, gently doing that. A loving embrace of the of the topiary <laughs> stem. This is where we need to have meditative spa music. But it really it really is kind of meditative, and it's and it's quite creative. And what I love about this form of topiary is that the gratification is so immediate. So if you can imagine, I would have three of these all lined up. I would top dress them in some gravel. I would moisten them really well, put them on some kind of decorative rectangular tray, and it would be, it would be just wonderful. Now what I'm gonna do at this point, which will exaggerate the topiary form a little bit more, is I'm gonna clip off these bottom leaves. Clipping in any particular way or place? I'm just clipping them off close to the stem. Leah doesn't want me to clip off those leaves. <laughs> I thought I heard, like, what, what did I do oh, here? <laughs> oh, she's, I heard a sad she's so soft-hearted. <laughs> and I... Okay, well, these I can, good question. These I can, oh, repeat the question, mm -hmm. sorry. Leah is, is sitting in the wings and she asks, how long will it take for this to grow into something the size that I have outside? Well, number one, this is not an evergreen, this is just an annual, and so because of that, I'm gonna, it's tender. I'm gonna have to bring this in in the winter, I'm gonna have to take it back out in the summer if I, if I want for it to get larger or I'm gonna to have to put it in a bright window and really babysit it well. That said, it could last for years and it could get very, very tall depending on how good of a mama I am. Now, if, I'm, if, if over time I might miss some watering or if I don't transplant it into a larger pot when it needs to be transplanted or I go on vacation and it expires, then I will thank, you, thank it for its service, relegate it to the compost pile. But if I am a good steward, then it, what will happen is, and this is where we want to show Stuart, this, this will just keep getting taller. And when it reaches the height that I want, or if I sense that it has reached its maximum height, then I will pinch the tips. So for example, right here, let's say I'm making this into a topiary, okay? okay. Let's say I want it to just be this tall. This is a baby topiary. This is a Barbie topiary, a Barbie topiary. doll topiary, okay? Like this. Then let's say this is as tall as I want it to be. Can you see that? I can. Your hands in the Okay, right okay. Right. So then I'll pinch out the top. Let's see if we can see where you're pinching. Okay, right here. Uh, yeah, I think that's good. I'm pinching out these top two leaves, okay? And then what it's going to do is it is going to start putting out exponentially two for every one stem that I remove. So then I will get two from this side and I'll get two for that side. And that is really how any plant gets more dense, gets bushier and gets fuller. So then what will happen is the bushiness will all be at the top. I will keep removing the bottom leaves and lo and behold then, and I can let this get as tall as I like before pinching it. I can't, if I want it to get taller then, don't pinch it. You want it to keep growing vertically, then pinch. 
when it's at its desired height, then you can, and that's when it will form kind of a little ball. But that said, even though this one is just a newbie, I think it's very, very cute. Okay, so Leah just asked, will I ever have to untie it? Well, as long as it's a baby and this stem is still rather tender and thin, I'll want it to, I'll want to keep the support in place because when I water it, if I bump it or whatever, it's not turgid enough, it's not solid enough really to handle that kind of disruption on its own. So that's why the support is in place. In addition, I want it to grow very, very straight. So I'll keep that in there for as long as I, as I desire. Now let's say that I had already reached my desired height and I just wanted to make a little tabletop topiary which would be cute if I kept it here at about seven to eight inches. I could do that, I could nip it out at the bud. In that case then, I would take some pruners, I don't think I've got any here, but I would take, there we go, I would take my pruners and I would just cut it off there. Then you wouldn't even be able to tell Where that I had a support in place. Yeah. yeah, 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 I could just cut it off here. Okay. okay. Last question. How do you know when it's time to transplant it? How do I know when it's time to transplant it? If I am if I am constantly watering it, Leah, if I feel like I am just really having to babysit it too much, if it's putting on really aggressive growth, if all of a sudden it feels like there's not enough soil in there to even support the root ball, in other words, it is primarily a root ball and not a potted plant anymore, then I will then transplant it to a bigger pot. Now, Stuart, let's take a break here before we move on and I'll show you a coleus topiary. Leah, Leah just commented, oh, that's like product placement in a movie because we have been living off of these LaCroix. These are the lime flavored ones. And the guys, they don't really like things too sweet. They're, they're kind of healthy. So we've been drinking a lot of these this summer, haven't we? Um, and boy, we go through them pretty quickly when it's really hot. Now, I know some of you are gonna be tacking. You'll say, oh, Linda, why do you say we when they are doing <laughs> most of the work. Well, yes, they are, but I periodically come out and help you, don't I? Yeah. Yeah, I point and click and I <laughs> say, move this here, move that there, just like Javier did when he put these back in place. But no kidding aside, when you guys are outside, make sure that you stay hydrated, whether it's just water, they keep huge, gosh, tubs of water in the car or it's something that's not too sweet but that will really hydrate you. And I asked Sergio about Gatorade, if he wanted me to get them Gatorade, and you said? No. No, 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 you said no. Well, I'm putting you on the spot, but because, because you said, didn't you tell me they had too much sugar? No, Coke, you got too much sugar. Yeah, yeah, too much, too much sugar. And I think it's hard to get them really cold, to taste cold. So anyhow, how this was not product placement, but it does give me an opportunity um, as our weathermen and meteorologists are doing ad nauseum right now. And that is in these extremely high temperatures, make sure that you hydrate constantly beyond thirst. Just drink lots even when you're not thirsty. Right guys? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, now let's do a coleus topiary. This is, I think, what I alluded to when we were taking the cuttings that we could do a topiary. Now, I am putting in, I've got just a, an Italian terracotta pot that formerly housed probably a Trader Joe's a Trader Joe's um, orchid. However, I found these, and there's some really beautiful ones at Bricks some large ones because I love this color. So this is just a good draining potty mix. You can make your own. I think I did an Instagram on that recently on how to make your own potting mix. But this is just a commercial blend, well draining commercial blend. And I'm gonna fill this up, maybe one more scoop. I do have on my cool job gloves. Always wanna give them a nod. They look pretty cool too. Yeah. 
think, and they say think green. Okay, so I've got my good quality, well-draining soil in here, and then I just have some of these bamboo stakes. So once again, or if you have not done this before, I'm just going to drill a rather large hole in there with one of these stakes. And you can get these bamboo stakes. I've even used chopsticks. I've used sticks from the garden. I've, I've gotten long bamboo canes and I have divided them up. Uh, the trick is, or I think the, the, the important thing is, is that they're very straight or as straight as possible. And I like them when they're aged, so I reuse them over and over again. So now I've got some cuttings and some cuttings lend themselves to topiary better than others. I've discussed this before, depending on how tall the stem is. Now I could make a short and stubby topiary out of this that would be about this tall. Show them why real quick. Oh, because that's what okay, because this, I've already pinched the terminal bud. So this one, I can do that, but I don't think I will. I want one that is a little bit taller. So this one is a little bit taller. And by the time I remove some of the bottom leaves, and by the way, I like doing this in my kitchen at the cutting board because A, it's not 110 degrees in here, but also I've got my compost bucket right here, which I have loved beyond measure. I can just throw the debris in here. If I'm arranging flowers or whatever, I can put the comp, I can put the leaves and the organic matter into my compost bucket that I just keep in the sink. Okay, so I'm now just going to gently gently place that in the hole. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Because I want this to be even a little bit taller. I'm gonna add some more soil. A lot of it is just a personal thing. How tall do you want it to be? Now, I could get, I could make really, really tall versions of coleus topiary, but these are gonna be just little tabletop topiaries that I might use indoors or outdoors. Uh, they might be part of an arrangement on a tablescape that I do. So these, or, you know, I'm thinking, I'm already starting to think about Christmas. Are you guys, um, there's a question for you. And these, if I can keep them alive till then, these would make great Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, hostess gifts. Okay, so I'm going to then very near the stem go ahead and put in my plant support. And even if I damage a few of those roots, I'm not too concerned about that because there were so many and they will rapidly regenerate. So then I'm gonna take off my gloves. I am going to secure the soil at the base. And then, this is coleus, and this no, is no, sorry, uh, this is called raffia. Yeah. Any crafter, you guys before. already know that. Okay, then I'm going to secure it to. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pinch some more off of these, toss them into the compost, and I'm going to secure this. to the stake very gently. I'm gonna give it, a, a, I'm not gonna really create a lot of tension there. I'm gonna leave it a little bit lax. Snip that off. You can use something besides raffia. You could use really whatever you have. Um, you can use those little tiny orchid clips. They look like little tiny um, hair clips. Okay, now this one, you can see here, if you'll notice, this one, the terminal bud, the tip has already been pinched out. But I'm thinking, I still want it to get taller. So what I'm gonna do, okay, this, hopefully you can see this. Okay, see this stem right here? Yes, how it has the two out and one out. Two, okay. I'm gonna make this be now my new leader so it will continue kind of 
doing. Yes, about. there are ways that you can kind of cheat, and some plants lend themselves to this more easily than others. But I am going to let that be the new leader, and then when it reaches the ultimate height, I will pinch that out. And as you do this yourself, it may seem a little bit confusing, but when you get a plant and you see that terminal bud, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, which is why I always encourage you guys to try this yourself because it is just so satisfying. And the thing about raffia is it sometimes breaks. I always have to show, show you all of my, my warts and all, my screw-ups. Get down there, because I don't want to torture those little leaves. It's hard for me to do this without being able to see it on both sides. There you go. Okay. And now I'm going to let that become the new leader, because I want this one to grow taller. Stuart, you know what, Let's, we're going to cut right here because I can't, I'm not seeing that. When I started to do the new leader at the beginning, cut and let's start over again because I'm having trouble with this raffia and I can't see it real well. So you want to wait until after you got it on to come back again? Just okay. Just figure out how to do it and then we'll start again. I'm going to do this, I think. I want to start recording again. Okay, okay, start recording again now. Okay. You're ready, me too. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure it to this point on its original stem. I really need to have my readers on to do this. So if it seems like I'm fumbling, it's because I can't see very well. Okay, now I'm going to attach that to the top. Clip that off. And now I want to create a new leader. So Stuart, can you see right there where I've already pinched it? Yes. So I'm gonna do a cheat. I can take this one or I can take this one, one of the side branches, and I can secure it to my stake and it will start serving as the new leader and it will keep growing vertically. And since I want this one to be a little bit taller, that is what I'm going to do, I think. So I'm going to take this one. Seems like the leader, doesn't it? Yeah, it now will look like the leader. Follow the leader. And I'm going to secure it, straightening it as I go. And right now it looks, oh, it doesn't really quite look formidable enough, but I promise you over time, as this stem puts on girth, that it will definitely become a substantial new leader. So you can probably already kind of see this and work your way up and down. And I put raffia on at any point that I think I might need it so that it will stand up and, and fly right and give it more support. Again, I should have had my glasses on to do this, but there. This one, I, and I do not know this variety, if you do, it's got tiny leaves, and I think the tiny-leaved varieties of coleus are really the superior candidates for making topiary. You can use larger-leaved uh, larger varieties like this one. If you do, plan on having a much larger topiary because I think it looks kind of funny to have these large leaves on a short stem. But these tiny leaves, I think, will look brilliant on a short or a tall stem. And as it grows, I will just keep pinching out the side shoots. So right here, you can see this is a side shoot. So I, there, here, Robert. You, you do, your hands from wherever you want to put them. Okay. The That's good. Okay, so now I'm going to pinch that out. And that will make this stem get bushier. 
I'm going to pinch this one. So I might even bushy, no pinch, pinch for height. Right. I can remember that. Yep. Yep. Okay. It's like Raggy Teddy you after Lucy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> And then for a while, while that root system gets established, I might need to come out here and kind of torque it a little bit to get it to stand up and fly right, but over time it will. And then I'll probably top dress this in some kind of fun gravel. Again, when it reaches its maximum height or the height that I want it to reach, I can take my pruners and I can clip off this bamboo cane to keep it kind of hidden to really camouflage it, or I can leave it in place, and I'm gonna leave it in place right now because I want this to continue to grow taller. But even in their tiny state, especially if I would top dress these in moss, or top dress them in gravel, or chicken grit, really anything, I think they already look like sweet, sweet little gifts. Now on the opposite side, on the west side of the patio, let's do kind of a, uh, just a little broad view so people can see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Wave, Leah. Wave, she's trying to hide. Out there, yet. there she is. There she is. Wave. Um, so on this side of the patio, what I am hoping to do <clears throat> is this. And this might change a little bit as things progress because as you know, I have my theory of garden relativity and that's every one thing relates to every other thing. And so when I put in the next component, that might change how things go moving forward. But at this point in time, what I hope to do <coughs> is right here and right there on both sides of the garage window, which yes, is filthy, I hope to plant these Little Miss Figgies. These are Southern Living Plants. Heretofore, I have had them in pots, and I think they will get much larger and be much more productive in the ground. So what I'm gonna do is plant them on either side in the ground, and then I'm going to try to espalier them on the wall, and I'm gonna see how that works. Now, these, my concern about this is a little bit that they, they may die back. Now, they, they don't die because they are, they're cold hardy and they will come back. But once I get the structure in place, I really don't want it to die. So I'm going to do whatever I can to protect the root ball. I think it will be helpful just having them up against the brick wall. And hopefully the residual heat and the ambient temperature will be a little bit higher here and will protect them and prevent them from dying all the way back. But I'll put them in the ground. I will mulch them very, very heavily, and then I'll start training them in some kind of espalier fashion on both sides. If it doesn't work, then I will dig them up. I will relocate them, put them in pots or whatever. But no guts, no glory. I think it's a gardening risk worth taking because I think it will be spectacular. And look here, I already have, I mean, I, I know, that means it's ripe. So look, I already have, these aren't quite ripe, but I already have some. And I, I think I spied Sergio. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I saw Sergio over here spying. <laughs> spying some of them. I, I told him I would get him one of these. I need to get him. Leah, remind me that I need to get Sergio a fig, a Little Miss Figgy. Um, so I think they'll be beautiful, and especially when they fruit, I think they will fruit that much more productively and hopefully that much more abundantly. More importantly, I think it will just be glorious and be beautiful. Now I'm standing in the shade right now, but before too long, this will be in the sun and then it gets in the shade again. So I'm hoping that the growing conditions will be perfect. Now, something else that I, I plan on doing that I hope will also provide a little bit of protection, at least from the wind and such, is that, Stuart, if you can follow me, <coughs> excuse me, over here, uh, I think I showed you this raised bed planter, and I definitely will give you the link. I love the way these look. I did buy them online, and I'm going to have I'm going to have three of them. 
There's going to be one, two. Oh, let me show them this, and then I'll show them where you're. Okay, going. sorry. No, okay. I've got my I've got my little peppers in here. Okay, You'll notice that these yeah you're. these are on stilts. And by the way, Kayla and I are going to be coming back in and putting a couple more reinforcing brackets at the bottom because there will be some pretty substantial weight in here once we fill this up with soil. So I'm going to have one long one here. These are about uh, like 50 inches, 52 inches. I can't remember exactly the dimensions, but I'll have one here, one here, and one here. Then right here, I am going to have, and this is Stuart where we want to put a still, I'm going to have probably a multi-trunk yopon, and I may have another one in between dividing up the space. So I'll have some, a little bit of shade. They'll kind of look like olive trees and I'll have a little bit of vertical interest. What's funny, Stuart? You usually do your tree pose when you're Oh, oh, tree. okay. I'm a yopon. I, I am a yopon. <laughs> I am a multi-trunk yopon. I laughed when it didn't happen. That's I funny. may have looked like just a gardener from Oklahoma, but oh no. Um, so then over here, Kayla is going to build for me two raised beds that will be shorter and larger and they will be closer, closer to the ground. These figs will be planted behind them and I just think that their presence, and by the way, they'll be constructed, we will show you the process, they'll be constructed to match exactly those, only they'll be custom made. So all of these around the space will be harmonious and similar. But I think their mere presence here and here will provide a little bit of protection um, for these in the winter. Now, typically, I wouldn't be concerned about this at all, except for recently our winters have had these just cold blasts, you know, these fall off the chart temps that historically we have not really had, or certainly we don't have them every year like we've been having them recently. So I think that will help. And then there'll be some plantings around the rain barrel, which we will put a link. In fact, we'll put a link below to all of the products that I'm talking about in this video. And I'll have some, <clears throat> some plantings around here to kind, of, to kind of soften it. And then I'm gonna reserve these two areas over here. Over here, which will be, uh, I'm gonna have a, a huge table along here. And this will kind of be my outdoor kitchen area. I do not have an outlet, an electrical outlet on this wall, but I think I will add one. And then I might have to have a small mini fridge out here so that the guys can get their own cold drinks so that I can get my own cold drink. And I think it'll be kind of stylish. I don't need all the other stuff. Hubs likes to use just a regular charcoal grill. Um, so I don't need all of the other bells and whistles. I already have a kitchen that I don't use as much as I should. I don't need another outdoor kitchen that I don't use really at all, but I do want some of the creature comforts of what outdoor kitchens provide. And for me, that is anything that is cold. So we will definitely, we will definitely probably have, definitely probably, <laughs> perchance, perhaps, one can dream, have a little outdoor refrigerator here. And Hub said, well, I want one, but I want it to look kind of retro. And uh, I, I noticed that online, Leah, they're so cute. They so cute. Did you say, I, I think I sent you the link. There's one that is just so, so cute and really well priced. So I think I'm gonna get a little retro fridge for out here to kind of you know, I don't know, just a little nod to the vintage of the house. And then right now, this might seem like a little tripping hazard because there's this lip, but all of this, when we get in the soil amendments and the mulch, all this will be on grade. And then there will be stepping stones 
that lead from here over to here. And then, Stuart, let's just, well, I'll tell you what, let's take a break here and I'll show you the stepping stones. Now I showed you earlier the process of taking out kind of the temporary smaller pieces of flagstone and replacing them with these really large pavers, which makes moving back and forth a lot easier. We didn't do this initially because we didn't want to keep it stored here and we just weren't ready to do it yet. But we will be adding in the areas that that look ugly right now where you can just see dirt and kind of tawdry grass. We will be putting in some of my signature mulch, 50% gravel and 50% happy grow. And then over here we did, and I believe I showed this to you earlier in one of the clips I took myself, that we have a little throw rug with just some of the remnants. We've got a little throw rug underneath the bench and I will soften it with a juga and things along the edge. Now, this is more of a focal point and to break up this large expanse of wall than it is for practicality. I might periodically sit here in the shade, particularly when the viburnum is in bloom, but right now it's more just a focal point. There's hubs a focal point for Hubs to appreciate as he walks up and down the sidewalk. And the rest of then, this then will be finished. It will be weeded. I will put another punctuating evergreen right here. And again, as I mentioned earlier, all of this metal surround and edging will pretty much be softened and be camouflaged by the ajuga. And then we'll just have easy passage from here all the way to the back. So for those of you that were concerned that it was a tripping hazard or it just wasn't substantial, indeed that has been addressed and we have larger pavers in here right now. And then we'll just come in this way, come over this way with pavers to where we kind of started this uh, southeast side of the patio. There'll be some plantings here. There's some really yummy uh, shrubs, evergreens from Southern Living Plants. I wanna try some pancake arborvitas and some other things that I'll try right here. And just step by step, slowly by s slowly, uh, step by step over time. This will get finished. I'm kind of, you can tell I'm starting to get hot, Stuart. Yeah, I'm losing too, my, tra yeah. <laughs> my train of thought. We will eat this elephant uh, one bite at a time and slowly but surely, it will be an absolutely wonderful, heavenly place to entertain, to dine, and simply to enjoy the beauty that surrounds us. You guys have a great Sunday. Thanks for hanging out with me. And next time we get together, maybe it'll be a little bit cooler and we can be drinking on the patio.